Hello everybody, why don't we sit down and grab a cup of coffee and talk about focus stacking. All right, welcome back. My name is Eric Marks with FindingMiddleEarth.com and today we're going to talk about a topic that I've been asked about quite a lot actually. Um, I had a viewer on my blog write in named Larry and he basically just asked me how I get the foreground elements in sharp focus and the background elements in sharp focus on most of my landscape photos where I have like a really uh, dominating uh, foreground element. Um, he basically just went on, he wrote a pretty long uh, contact form out, so I'm not going to read the whole thing, but he basically just said that um, he's tried to do the same thing. He shoots a lot of landscape photos, and whenever he has, uh, I think he used as an example, he was shooting by the ocean and had a big pile of rocks in the foreground, and so he just naturally thought that he should focus on those rocks, and so he did that. He got home thinking that he had this epic shot, and uh, the rocks were super sharp, and then the ocean and the sunset were just pretty soft. Um, he didn't say slightly soft, he said they were almost blurry. So, you know, there's a lot of factors that come into that. I don't know what uh, f-stop Larry was shooting at, I don't know what his camera settings were, um, but I do know how to help you if you're having a similar problem. Uh, the technique is called focus stacking. So I'm going to give you an example today on the computer because I actually just recently shot a photograph where I did just that. I focus stacked so that I could get something very close to the lens in focus and the background in focus as well, all the way uh, through sharp focus. So here's kind of the theory before we jump into the computer. Um, a lot of cameras, no matter what lens you put on, uh, if you have something, let's say that this is the camera right here, my finger is the camera lens, okay? And if your foreground element is this finger and it's right here by the lens and you try to focus on that or you try to focus on the background, you're probably going to have one of the two elements be out of focus, whether it's the foreground or the background, depending on where you focus. So basically, even if you use the highest f-stop number in the world to get the largest depth of field, you're still not able to get a picture-perfect, beautiful, tack-sharp image if that foreground element is super close to the lens, okay? But there is a way around this. Um, it's just taking two photos and essentially blending them together. But it's a, it's a little more than that. So let's go ahead and hop into the computer and I will show you how I do this process. Okay, so here we are in Adobe Bridge. And uh, excuse me, I have quite a few other photos I'm working on in here. But uh, these are the two that we're gonna be working on, okay? And so, this is uh, the first image, and it, I named it foreground because if you can tell, the foreground of this photo is in super sharp focus, all this broken glass here. But if we scroll to the background, you can see it's very soft. Uh, not a lot of detail, not sharp at all. It's essentially just a blur, okay? And I wasn't trying to go for that like bl nice blurry smooth bokeh effect uh, because I was shooting here at I believe F11. Um, or even F16. So you can see, even at such a large depth of field as F11 or F16, I still wasn't able to get this window here and the background in focus because this window was so super close to my lens, okay? Um, and because the foreground was so close to the background. That's another uh, reason as well. So as you, you can tell, you know, because this is a truck, the window wasn't very far away from the steering wheel. So there's a lot of factors that come into play, but essentially you just have to do some, some testing when you're on location. Use the back of your LCD screen to at least check focus, because you don't always have to focus stack. Uh, you know, I'm not saying that you need to do this with every single photograph, but in some of them it can really, really help. Okay, so this is the foreground. Now let's go ahead and uh, switch over to the second image I took. And this is, as you can see, a very sharp and very detailed background, but a very soft and blurry foreground. So if we just swap between the two, foreground in focus, background in focus, foreground, background, okay? And as you can see, uh, if we could just mix, you know, magically mix these two photos together, we would have a perfectly sharp image. So I'm going to show you the uh, best process to achieve just that, to get the perfect depth of field. So let's go ahead and select, hold shift, and uh, select both of these images that we're working with. Go to Tools, Photoshop, and Load Files into Photoshop Layers. Okay, 
and that'll take just a second and it will open both of these files up in Photoshop CC as you can see here and it will open them up as layers. Okay, so what we're gonna do is, uh, the foreground is on top, the background is on bottom. Uh, you don't always have to have it this order, it doesn't really matter, but here's the biggest part, okay? If we were to just blend these together ourselves, right? Like creating a layer mask like you would in any kind of normal Photoshop situation and just kind of paint in the, you know, the, the sharp area and paint out the blur. It sounds so easy, but it's really tough because um, number one, there's a lot of sharp edges here that you can't perfectly paint. It would take hours to perfectly paint the, you know, the sharpness around all these blades of, uh, glass here and run all these little nooks and crannies in the car. So it would, be, it would be very time consuming. So I wouldn't recommend doing it manually. Also, the biggest reason is because of this. So let's look at the difference. We're gonna turn the foreground off and, and uh, look at the background layer. So if you toggle between the two, you'll see whenever I switched the focus from the window to the background, it actually slightly changes the perspective, okay? And I was on a tripod the entire time. I didn't move the camera one inch. This is just what happens when you refocus the camera, okay? It almost looks like it slightly zooms in and zooms out, okay? This isn't a problem if you follow this process that I'm about to show you, but it is a big problem if you try to paint this in manually, because as you can see, the uh, between photos, they're not aligned properly. So if you just start painting them, nothing's going to match up the same. You're gonna essentially just get uh, this kind of weird, you know, lagging shutter effect, like a blurry photo. Okay, so what we're gonna do to fix this, the alignment issue first, is uh, select the top layer and then hold shift and click on the bottom layer. We're gonna go up here to edit and auto align layers, okay? You get all these options. So there's one very important option. Uh, first off, you need to select auto or cylindrical. Uh, auto should work 99% of the time. For that 1% of the time that auto does not work, go ahead and click on cylindrical and then hit okay. But the most important, important piece of the puzzle is the, to check this box here, geometric distortion. Okay, what this does is it corrects that weird uh, zoom difference between the two that I showed you a minute ago. How whenever I toggle between the two layers because we focus in two different sections, how it looks like one is slightly zoomed in and zoomed out. So this geometric distortion is what completely corrects that. It actually bends the corners and you know distorts the image to fit perfectly in a line on top on. Uh, on top and bottom of each other like perfectly aligned pieces of paper. So always, always check that box. Uh, hit OK and then it will do its thing. It's just gonna run an algorithm and basically analyze each layer and then it will, uh, based on the algorithm, it will perfectly align them. Um, but that geometric distortion box is a huge, huge thing. If you do not check that, then they will still uh, have that weird perspective issue where you're, you're looking at one that's slightly more zoomed in than the other. So we're gonna let Photoshop do its thing here. Um, almost done. Which, uh, by the way, this this uh, truck was at a place here in Georgia called Old Car City. Uh, it's a very, very cool place if you're ever in white Georgia. Very cool place to visit. Um, okay, so the geometric distortion and the auto alignment just uh, finished. And I want you to pay attention very closely to something. It just pretty much ate up all of the corners of the image here. Okay, you can see it bent down. It, it's almost like this photo just turned into kind of a, a weird looking oval shape because look, it ate into all of our corners. It bent them down and bent them up. Okay, but that's perfectly fine because look what it did. I'm gonna toggle them on and off again. Aha, see, they don't move. There's no perspective or zoom difference between the layers anymore. It fixed that geometric distortion. So now, whenever we do this process that I'll show you in a minute, that blends the sharpness together, now we're not gonna have that issue. Everything is perfectly aligned. Okay, so, uh, you know, you obviously don't wanna leave these just dead pixels sitting there. So I'm going to uh, hit the C button on my keyboard and I'm gonna just crop this slightly to get rid of that. And I'll crop this down slightly. And by the way, I'm perfectly fine cropping uh, my photos. I shoot with a Nikon D810, which is 36 megapixels. So, you know, I, I can afford to crop until the cows come home. Okay, so uh, let's just show you again. Toggle back and forth. Everything is perfectly aligned. So now what we're gonna do is hold, uh, click on the top layer again, shift select the bottom layer so that we have both layers selected. 
go to edit again, but this time instead of auto align layers, we're gonna go to auto blend layers. Okay, so before I hit okay, I want you to notice, we're gonna take a look again. This is the foreground shot, okay? We have the, the window nice and sharp and the background is blurry. Okay, so now you wanna select stack images and have the seamless tones and colors box checked off. Hit okay. And this is what's gonna do the magic now that we've aligned the photos. It's gonna make that one beautiful sharp photo for us. Voila, check it out. Now how cool is that? So we just took those two photos we ran a couple of, you know, kind of just basic housekeeping Photoshop processes on them. And what, five minutes later, here we are into a perfectly uh, sharp and huge depth of field photograph. So let's zoom in on that so you can see. And as you can see, everything is nice and sharp on the foreground as well as the background. And I'm zoomed in at 200% here. Everything is flawless. You can see there's no you know, mess ups on these sharp edges. There's no slight blur going on. Everything, just this process in Photoshop of blending just did a perfect job. It always does really great. As long as you remember to correct the geometric distortion. It's one of the biggest things. So as you can see, we have a huge depth of field, a perfectly sharp, uh, foreground and background and let's take a look over here at the layers what it did this is the cool part so it still did uh, masking layer masking at its basic level oh whoops right there I'm just gonna click on this mask so you can see it just created masks for each layer but using the algorithm it did its own painting to actually paint away all of the blurry pixels and it basically detects which pixels are the sharp pixels and it just paints out all the blur on both layers and it exposes the sharp pixels. So it does this quick layer mask algorithm and just a few minutes later you have this beautiful photo. And now we can uh, post process it and, and uh, you know, uh, switch around all the colors and do the regular workflow that we would normally do now that we have done uh, everything to this point. So I just think this is one of the coolest things, it's one of the coolest tricks that I've been using for years uh, because anything like this where you have this huge dominant foreground element and you just can't get the depth of field to carry all the way through the back, this is a very easy and seamless process to take care of that. So, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, I really love making these tutorials, so if you guys would like to stay updated on all of my videos, just click the subscribe button, and I'll talk to you later. Thank you guys for watching. If you would like to stay up to date on all of my latest photography videos and adventures, click the big subscribe button below. And if you would like to find out more about me and how to become a great photographer, visit my website at findingmiddleearth.com.